iOS 26 on the weakest iPhone that can run it, the iPhone SE 2020. This iPhone released in April of 2020 and has a full gigabyte less RAM than the iPhone 11 it shares the processor from. It is officially the weakest device that can run iOS 26, and this will almost certainly be its last version. So. How does it hold up? Well, I'm going to briefly compare it with an iPhone SE 2020 running iOS 18, specifically 18.5, and this is on 26 developer beta 9. So first off, let's try some general app snappiness. Let's open up the camera. And they're both pretty similar there. This one opened up to video. And how about the app store, because that loads in content from the internet. Little bit of a delay there on 26. Of course, the App Store has been completely redesigned, along with the whole rest of the interface with liquid glass. Okay, what about the clock? A simple app. Both were very fast. I don't think you're really going to notice the difference there. Pulling down the tray at the top was also the same speed. Apple have really done a good job porting this all the way back. And what about something pretty essential? The phone dialer. Very fast on both, except still a hair slower on iOS 26 there. But overall, given this phone's vintage, it is holding up very well. Okay, but let's talk some upsides and downsides real quick. Obviously an upside you get from updating to a newer version of iOS is longer software support. Looking in the App Store right now, if we go to an app like TikTok and scroll down somewhat, you can see that it currently requires iOS 12, which is pretty modest. Some apps you'll see require all the way up to things like iOS 16 here. So as a new version of iOS releases, that minimum version that apps target is going to be increasing, of course. So you obviously have longer support from the newer version. However, a downside is that I've seen reports online that JIT apparently doesn't work on iOS 26 anymore. Now this won't be a problem for the majority of people, but if you happen to run emulators that require that, like Dolphin for iOS, you're going to be SOL on iOS 26. However, at the same time, if we go back here, we can see other reports that it is working again on newer betas, so I don't know, it's up in the air as to whether or not it will work on the uh, full release of iOS 26. Another upside to upgrading is that you get all of Apple's new apps, like the main Games Hub, which Game Center used to be its own uh, standalone app, but for the past few years it's just sort of been hanging out in the settings app. It's nothing life-changing, but there are also other new additions like the preview app which lets you, well, preview any sort of file that the macOS counterpart can, you know, PDFs and that sort of thing. And of course you have the completely redesigned interface that you've no doubt seen already online. It's definitely presented in its full glory here on this old iPhone, but you'll notice a lot of things are very rounded. Like if I pull down to open the keyboard here, you'll see it has rounded edges here, which you can imagine looks very nice on a phone that has, well, an edge-to-edge -edge display. Here, it's a little out of place, but it's not that bad. I do like the rounding off of things. This is going to be very subjective and personal, and people have been wondering if you can turn it off. So let's see what it looks like if we go into accessibility here and reduce transparency. So right away, the back button up there, we can see it's more gray than the uh, transparent look it had a moment ago, but if we compare this to how it looks on iOS 18, it's obviously still different. Now, I've got my text size on the smallest setting on both of these phones, just because I think that's the best way to maximize the available real estate of the screen, but you can see if I scroll up on both of these, you can see we are actually fitting more items on the screen on the old iOS 18 than we are on 26. iOS 26 is giving more padding to these elements here. So you can see, we get an entire extra setting on the left. So if you care about information density, then maybe 26 isn't for you. Let's just take another look at how this appears without uh, transparency on. You can see going home, everything still sort of has a uh, shiny edge there, but the uh, glassy effects behind everything is greatly reduced. And if we pull down to the clock, it still takes on a liquid glass appearance, but I believe that's something you can change and click the clock. Yeah, you can pick between glass or solid. So if you'd like to have how it used to look, that's going to be as close as you can get. Now, personally, I am a huge fan of liquid glass because I'm a sim for Frutiger Arrow. I have to confess it to you guys. I love that skeuomorphic era of design. And while the flattening of everything was exciting when it first happened, now looking back, it's very dull and lifeless. So I am here for liquid glass but it's good to see that you can dial back the effects if you need to for a personal preference thing. But for a performance thing, honestly, it hasn't really slowed the device down too noticeably for me, even on this iPhone SE 2020. Look at that, that is so hot. Look at it, look at it. And even things like the uh, settings opening there, if you look very closely, it kind of springs out from that corner of the screen. And you are gonna notice that the system as a whole is a lot like bouncier and livelier. 
Like if we just unlock the device here, you can see it just sort of slid up there, whereas here, they sort of bounced a little bit. And I've also noticed even when swiping back here, take a look at this. They sort of bounce just a little bit. It's just a little bit of liveliness. Again, probably subjective. You'll like it or you won't like it. Personally, I love it. And if we review the storage usage here, you can see iOS down at the bottom there has jumped up by a gigabyte. And system data, I'm not sure if I'm going to analyze that too deeply because I use these two phones very differently. But um, yeah, it definitely uses more space. So that's something to watch out for if you have one of the lower end models, but it's not too bad. So this is a pretty quick look at iOS 26 on the iPhone SE 2020. Like I said, there's ups and downs to upgrading. This will likely be the last version that this device ever gets. And you have to remember that you can't downgrade these devices or at least not easily. So once you go in, there's pretty much no going back. If you're on the fence, my advice is to just hold off for a little bit until more and more users start testing this for themselves and reporting their findings. Obviously, you're not getting any Apple intelligence stuff on this older hardware, which could be a positive for some people. So the upgrade is less gargantuan than it is on newer devices, but that's to be expected. This hardware is from 2019 and it's definitely getting on in age, but it's good to see that it's still a snappy device. Like we're not dealing with iOS 9 on the iPhone 4S levels of slowness. And thank you for doxing me, Calendar. <laughs> anyway, yeah, iOS 26, pretty cool stuff. Let me know what you think. Bye guys.